welcome back so in the previous video we were able to build the typing challenge container along with the challenge details card in this video we are finally going to jump on to the typing challenge and then we are going to see why do we need one more component which is the test letter so as you can see here all the letters that are printed here they are not just a single paragraph each letter is in itself another component as you can see this is rendered like this so as always inside our typing challenge container we are going to have a typing challenge instead of this p tag which is the uh, this is the real challenge so firstly let's go into the components and create another component which is going to be the typing challenge and let's create a jsx for it and let's also create a css for it typing challenge or css and let's start building our simple typing challenge component this one is going to be pretty cool as a, as a good exercise for our css and html things we are going to learn a lot in this one so yes firstly let's import react let's also import our style sheet otherwise we might forget it later on as we did in the last section let's also create a functional component i'm going to name it the typing challenge and inside here firstly i am going to have uh, some we are going to have some props like for example uh, we can have the selected paragraph we can have the test info we can have a lot of things we can have the timing time remaining we can have the timer started or not but all of that we are going to see later on but for now let's have a selected paragraph we are going to see it later on in the next to next video on how to how can we call a new paragraph every time the page is loaded and how to get those fetch those paragraphs from the api and so on in the next video but for now uh, let's assume that we are getting the selected paragraphs from from the props and let's style our component so as always i am going to name it typing challenge and i think the spelling is wrong challenge even though the spelling is wrong it does not matter because this is something which we have to name it around on our own but i don't like spelling mistakes so <laughs> let's uh let's correct it but anyways yeah so i have added a timer container here because firstly we need to show the timer and inside the timer let's say i am going to name it uh, a p uh, i'm going to have a p tag with the class name of timer and i'm for now i'm just hard coded so let's say 60 seconds are remaining and just below our timer we are also going to have a timer info to show us that start typing to or let's just copy and paste it from this one but yeah no never mind i'll just type it out but yeah this is the thing that we are building we are building a timer here and we are actually saying start typing to start the test so here it will be something like as soon as we start typing it's going to be uh, the timer is going to be started so yes uh, the, and that component will be removed so start typing to start the test this is as simple as that and then again uh, so now that we have this ready let's have one more container which is going to be the text area container where we are going to have those text areas one and two so let's jump onto that as well i am going to name the class as uh, maybe text area uh, container that should be good enough and inside that basically we are going to have two text areas so i am firstly going to name my first text area as text area left and the other one as text area right in the first one firstly i am going to uh, have another div so instead of having the text area because that we don't need to keep it editable although i'm just calling it a, as a text area but still we don't need to have a text area there i am just going to place my div div tag there and i'm going to name it as text area also i am going to have one more class on it named paragraph paragraph and this is going to be like this so this is super cool and here let's just type our uh, hello world or something 
but for now as i said i am assuming that this is coming from the props so i'll just copy and paste this and just use this one selected paragraph and in my right text area i am now going to use the real text area so i am going to create a text area we don't need to uh, have anything inside that as of now and i am just going to name it as my class name as text area itself and the placeholder as let's say start typing here oh my god what happened to my spelling mistake so much cool no no problem start typing here to start the test i think this is also cool enough so yes this is a boilerplate or a skeleton of what we are going to build let's try to pull it in inside our typing challenge container to see how it looks as of now typing challenge container not typing challenge container it's going to be typing challenge itself because it's not a container and inside this i'm going to pass on my selected paragraph as um, let's say hello world this looks quite good enough so this is how it is going to look for now without any stylings 60 timers or start timing start typing to start the test and the hello world so in this one as i told in the beginning itself it's going to be a real challenge to style this and this is going to involve a lot of styling so that's why i have kept one video on this itself and in the next video we are going to see more so yes in let's go back to our typing challenge and as i told you this is for now it's going to be just a div where we are just typing in the hello world or selected paragraph but in reality let's just check it out once more in reality in our real project this one is going to be every letter is going to be a separate component we are just going to see why is it required but for now let's just take it to be a div itself and let's start styling it so let's start off from the typing challenge itself so let me just copy and paste the typing challenge and then first of all as always display flex flex direction i am going to keep it as column i know you might be super annoyed by now that i am doing it every time just hang on with me for this particular project so that from the next project i assure you that i am going to give you a boilerplate so that you don't have to waste your time in doing all this repetitive stuff plus we can also try to incorporate sas and scss so that uh, we don't have to type this display flex again and again we can just have some placeholder and then reuse that because in css there is a lot of redundancy and then inside that timer container i am just going to keep the margin as how about let's say 16 pixels that seems good enough and for the timer itself for the exact uh, property let me just copy and paste this for the timer i'm going to first of all font size is to be a little bit less than what it is now it's super huge now so let's say 36 pixel or 38 pixel should be enough and font weight is going to be a little bit bolder so i'm going to give it 600 margin of course zero we don't want any extra margins and text align to be center this looks super cool and then let's also style the timer info so inside the timer info again this is going to be very simple margin zero margin top i'm going to keep it as minus five pixels color i am going to keep it a little bit red so and to make it highlight and to show the user that this text is important it's not the exact red but it's a shade of red you can say and font size a little bit less than the timer itself so 20 pixels should be good and of course let's not forget to align it in the center this looks good so as you can see our first styling is complete and i am super happy about it so let's do some more styling on the text area container so yeah this one is going to take a little bit of time you can again go to my github repository which is github.com slash the lean programmer slash flash type and give this repository a star and then use this to use the style exact same style that i'm going to type here to save your time if you want to save your time but in case you don't in case you want to follow along i am super happy to help you out display flex as always flex direction is going to be row we don't even need to put flex direction as row but anyways let's put it flex grow is going to be one because i need them to occupy as much space as they can and width is going to be 80 percent 
this looks cool enough for now and now let's style our text area left and text area right so for both of them i am going to take some similar style text area left and text area uh, let's copy and paste the right because i don't need, want to make any spelling mistakes today i'm making so many spelling mistakes i don't know what happened to me but anyways width is going to be the 50 percent and flex grow let's take it to be as one and now finally 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 let's style our text area as well so this is going to be super exciting so firstly i am going to align my text at left because it should be left lined and flex grow again one because i want to make it occupy as much space as it can get uh, minimum height or maybe let's let's do a height itself because i don't want that to grow i want uh, the text areas to be of constant height they can scroll within themselves but uh, not extend the height which i provide them width can be of 100 percent and uh, let's talk about padding padding can be i think 12 pixel or 10 pixel should be good enough from all the sides line height can be 18 pixels i think so flex wrap of course i want to wrap the content i don't want it to be overflowed and again how can we miss our favorite thing the box shadow because i don't want to type the box shadow again i'm just going to go to nav.css and copy this box shadow and then i am going to have the transition uh, let's leave the transition for now at least that's not something super important but yes overflow as crawl because yeah i know we should have transition of block shadow as to give some feedback of gesture to the user or maybe let's just have a super uh, simple transition unlike the last time let's give it all of 0.2 seconds or yeah i think this should be fine and then just oh, not milliseconds it should be seconds and on text area hover let's increase the box shadow a little bit how about keeping it 14 pixel and 28 pixel i'm just going to make it super big just to uh, just to make it stand out that yeah you have hovered on this element so yeah that seems good enough and on text area i uh, think that should be good enough and let's have a look at we are missing it something so yes this is the text paragraph we want to style the text paragraph also a little bit so on the text paragraph let's keep the font size at 12 as 12 pixel and the background as a little bit dark not dark grayish background so e7 or maybe e9 e7 e4 should be good enough for now and of course padding the same padding as we gave in the other uh, text area is going to be 12 pixel so as you can see this is super super exciting so now just one more thing so as you can see some big big uh, scroll bars here which i don't actually need so what i can do is inside my text area i can provide the scroll bar width as none and inside my uh, yeah, I think that should do if that does not do then I think if I remember correctly I am not 100% sure you can always check these things on Google But yes, uh, this these are some simple things which you can easily find so you don't have to buy hard all these things So of course if I remember correctly, it was WebKit scroll bar Let me search for it scroll bar. So that's the benefit of using VS code or any intelligent uh, text editor. So yes, it gives us and i am going to give it a display of none awesome so as you can see the text areas disappeared and what else do we want this is looking super cool so now just one more thing before ending this video let's conditionally render the typing challenge and the try again in our test container based on a flag so for now although that flag should be coming from the state or somewhere else but for now i'm just going to define this flag here which is timer started or maybe timer ended or something like that probably uh, we can have either we can have a boolean which is going to be like timer started or something like that but i am going to go with the time remaining because anyhow uh, 
we are checking the time remaining here 60 seconds 39 seconds 40 seconds and so on so let's do something like time remaining equal to how about 30 seconds of as of now and i can do one thing here so this is how we conditionally render things in react it's a very very simple ternary operator which you would have studied in your high school or your or your first year of college undergraduate so yes what we are going to do is again these curly braces as you already know for, for now inside jsx these curly braces represent an expression or a variable so time first of all the spelling is wrong i don't know why i'm making so many spelling mistakes today time remaining yeah that should be good enough now i'm just going to make a simple check if time remaining is greater than zero then i am going to render my typing challenge container i can cut and paste it from here otherwise it's a simple ternary operator time remaining greater than zero if this condition is true then do this if it's false then do this so you must have studied about this this is a ternary operator as i was saying and let's just copy and paste this here and let's just delete it from here we don't need it so as simple as that this does not break anything and let's just do it as zero to check out if it's working it's working superb so in our final version this time remaining will be coming from the app section or the app component so for now let's just think that it's coming from app component and let's imagine that and let's be happy with that so yeah this is it for this video see you in the next video